Hi, everyone. Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb. We're still fooling around with the Cub, but we got the engine running. In a couple of days, we should be fine. Now, when Mr. Piper built this airplane in 1938, I doubt if he ever imagined that 75 years later it would still be alive and kicking, but it sure is. If you own an airplane, I seriously doubt if it's a new airplane, since the average age of the GA fleet is more than 40 years. So to keep these airplanes maintained and safe, we've had to develop new methods to maintain and inspect them with an emphasis on looking inside the airplane to see if we can see things like cracks in the structure or any kind of corrosion, and that's what we're doing here on the Cub today. Now, one of the tools that we've developed is the borescope. The borescope has been around for a number of years, and it's basically nothing but a camera connected to a remote viewer. But these things have really uh, become very sophisticated in the uh, recent years. And we're going to take a look at uh, one built by Snap-on and show you how we're using it to inspect the innards of the Cub. Okay, Danny, you've been using the Snap-on. This is the BK-8000, which is a relatively recent model. Now, t tell us a little bit about some of the features of this thing. This thing can take video and snapshots. It has an SD card USB output for video and sound. Um, what I use it for specifically is the zooming in and, and getting longer reach that I can't see with a flashlight and mirror. So this really expands your capability to see inside the airplane because it used to be we would have to get a flashlight and a mirror and, and we're only going to see so far uh, down the uh, wing internal. Absolutely. And of course this air, airplane is 75 years old so it's got a wooden spar so I'm really concerned about that. Now uh, what we're going to, we're going to overlay some B-roll here and you can see the spar. What are we looking at? I'm generally looking for any kind of blistering or any kind of dryness on the, on the varnish area. See if we got any kind of lifting or separation. When you start getting lifts or cracks, you're going to see like blisters in the varnish. This spar is in very good shape. I know that one of the spars here, the right spar, I believe, had two splices in it. And uh, you, we could get straight up on the, on the splice area and see that it has not been working. Um, the splice is done with staples and glue with an overlay of real thin ply, plywood and uh, then varnished in. And you can, you can always see if it's been working, you start getting like a smoke, almost like the aluminum. You know, you get the black streaks. Mm -hmm. You start seeing the wood move a little bit, and you'll start seeing streaks from it. Now, this device will take a video. It'll take snapshots. Uh, you, can, you can change the light level. You can change the angle of the camera head. And it's wireless, I noticed. That yeah, it's nice. The early ones had that curly cord. Had about a three-foot curly cord. And every time you went to do something and change position, darn camera would fall. Uh, if we want, we probably will. We can make a video of the spar and include it in the aircraft records. Yeah. Put it on a yeah. put it on a stick or or any kind yeah. of card, and there it'll be. So, two years or five years from now, we can see if there've been any changes. Now, there's not much we can do to make these airplanes any younger, but we can certainly spot issues before they become safety of flight problems and repair them. I'm Paul Bertarelli, reporting for Avweb and Aviation Consumer. See you next time.